Hello everybody. Um, it is Sunday, March 26th, at about um, 5, 5, 15 p.m. Um, as you can see, I'm currently at Camp Freedom 2. I'm going to do an update so that um, you are aware of what's going on with the channel and going on with me. Um, I just got here and as you can see, um, we've had a visitor come by. I'm not sure who or what was visiting, but I'm suspecting our little raccoons. Although, um, the other day we had the armadillo here. Uh, they're coming by and knocking over the water catchment system, I think looking for water. And I, I just got to the camp and um, opened up the vehicle because I'm... Well, I don't know if I'm going to do the tour today. Maybe I'll try to do it tomorrow. Unless I have time today, I'll go ahead and clean out the vehicle and give everybody a tour of the system. Oh, my light's on here. But, um... Anyhow, I just wanted to let you know what's going on with my life and the current situation. I wanted to thank everybody for all your um, input about Little Blue and me trying to purchase another vehicle and, um... All the suggestions everybody had and all the people who stepped up to try to help me um, quite a few people have donated um, either sent cash outright and others have um, uh, went through my uh, patreon account and are trying to set that up and, and get some funds coming in and others still have offered their services and stuff one of them is Leonard um, who you might be hearing quite a bit about in uh, future episodes because he's, he's trying to help me promote this channel um, and the reason for that is I don't know if you saw my previous channel where I talked about um, the channel growing like crazy <sighs> when I um, first started living in the van about eight eight almost nine months ago when I was actually on the road and living full-time in it um, the channel was actually not generating any income really it was like for the first three months that it was up it made I think a whopping 50 or 75 cents or something when I started putting content up, um, probably about eight months ago, it took about three months before I got my first paycheck, which was like $150. That was for two months of earning because I was earning roughly $70, $75 per month. And as you can see, that's not really enough to live off. Um, but as I continued to upload videos, the channel started getting more views and a lot of the fans or a lot of the, the subscribers or even non-subscribers, the uh, viewers were actually um, watching all the playlists and the ads and stuff and that generated quite a bit of income. At that point, this was about September, October, the channel was starting to hit about 200 to $250 a month in earnings, which still is not enough to live off but that was enough for gasoline and um, insurance for the vehicle. So, let's jump forward. In November, I ended up taking that gig. In, in mid to late November, I took the knife gig selling knives, and that pulled me from the channel. I did try to do some uploads as I could, but it became increasingly difficult because the job kept me like going nonstop from city to city and town to town or whatever, selling knives at various Sam's Club. Um, and the YouTube channel fell very rapidly. So if, if there's anything to learn from this, it's that if you want a successful YouTube channel, you're probably gonna have to keep updating it um, pretty much every day or almost every day. You cannot just go away. <laughs> because as soon as you leave the channel, Whew. The uh, viewership drops, the um, ad revenues drop. Not little, but drastically. Um, when I came back, let's say I, I left in late November, and I did continue to do updates, just not as often. When I um, started again in early March, which was this early this you know late February, early March is when I um, left the knife gig and came back here. Um, the channel was down to earning about seventy dollars per month in revenue. And dropping so then I started uploading the videos again and for some reason the viewership went way up I don't know if YouTube changed their search or recommendations and stuff but my channel started growing um, I mean we're still super tiny there's a lot of uh, channels that are much larger than we are or I am right here but um, the channel tripled in size 
when all the traffic started, the channel only had like 2,100 people. I think between 1,800 and 2,100, somewhere in that range when I came back in, um, in early March. Uh, since then, it's grown up to about 2,600 or so people right now. So we have 2,600 people who are subscribed. But out of that, only about 20% or so are actually um, consistent viewers. The rest of the traffic that we've gotten has been um, just random click-throughs. So people are tuning in, but they're not actually watching all the videos. So those are videos that seem to be popular. And um, as sad as I am to say, most of those videos are videos of me complaining. <laughs> I guess people just want to hear other people complain. But anyhow, um, we're not going to be doing a lot of complaining here. <laughs> We're going to be doing some um, new content, and this is possible because when I saw those numbers jump like that, I was like, you know, this could conceivably be a new job for me if it works out, if there's actually enough demand for it. So I decided to set up the patron um, channel, or the patron page, per request of various um, viewers who've been asking me, like over the past year, almost the past nine months, eight months I've been on the road. Um, I went ahead and did it. Now, we don't have a lot of patrons right now, and that's okay. But it is there, and um, what's even more important is the number of views we're getting. We're getting, like, a lot of interactive views. People are watching all the videos, watching the playlists, interacting with the ads. Um, even though my, uh, my subscription base is very small, I think cranking in about $500 a month is not bad. Now, that number is just an estimate, and I haven't even gotten paid $500 a month yet, but... Um, it is what I expect to make this month. That just pretty much covers child support. <laughs> but it's giving me some hope that um, if the channel continues to grow and I can continue to keep the traffic coming, it could become a regular job. And I can actually earn enough to cover child support, cover um, insurance, and cover living expenses. So that's where we're at. And that's why I'm out here today, because there are going to be changes. Um, I know that the channel originally started off as a channel to show people how to make an emergency shelter in a vehicle, uh, specifically a minivan, if they found out they were about to lose their home or be out on the street. And that's how the channel started. And then I found myself in that, <laughs> that situation, which was crazy. but. Then it became a personal vlog about me um, living in a van and trying to survive day to day on a very uh, tight and, and uh, budget with pretty much no safety net. And um, even though we haven't fully left that mode yet, we have the issue with the vehicle right now. Um, those of you who have been following where my van is... Oh, I think it's on her last leg. Little Blue has served me very well, but um, I think she's about ready to retire. Anyhow, um, what that means is I obviously cannot be driving around, at least not very long distances and stuff. Um, she's misfiring. Uh, they think the computer's bad. I was going to fix her, but then I'm like, well, I can sink more money into fixing her and she doesn't work, or something else breaks. And I contemplated looking for another vehicle, but then the vehicles I've looked at, they look like crap. And what's scarier is I don't know their mechanical status. You know, they could I could spend the money. I don't have that much, so my budget was roughly $1,000 for a vehicle. Which, by the way, Lil Blue cost me, like, only, I think, eight or $900 to start off with um, when I bought her. So I kind of lucked out with her because I put on more than 24,000 miles on her in eight months, nine months of driving here. So I was hoping to get another vehicle like Little Blue, but that's proving to be kind of hard. I am still going to keep my eyes open, but that brings me finally to um, what's happening. Those of you who um, have been encouraging me and supporting me, um, either with your kind words, um, sharing the videos and just giving me encouragement and praying for me. I appreciate it. Um, it's carrying me um, this far and going to carry me on forward to this next phase. We are at Camp Freedom 2 because I'm going to use this camp as a base for some new content. I don't know if you can hear the others in the background there, but um, 
what we're going to do is actually expand Camp Freedom 2. I am going to start building and expanding this area. You know, um, we're probably going to expand stuff to include survival in the bush. So I have um, walked here often, but never actually gone back here to see what's back there. And that's going to be one of my first things, is to actually scout and explore this area surrounding Camp Freedom 2. The actual woods, and see what's behind here. Because once we make that assessment, I'm planning on building some stuff. And um, the buildings aren't going to be conventional buildings. And the reason is, one, lack of funds. But two, I think it's going to be a lot more entertaining and interesting if I build uh, mostly with existing materials. Although I do cheat a little bit. I'll admit I'm not a purist. I'm not going to build... I'm not... <laughs> I'm not going to make my own rope. <laughs> I'm going to buy rope if I need rope. I'm going to use um, tape and modern conveniences if I have access to it. Okay? So, um, if I didn't have access to it, yeah, I would make my own rope and whatnot. But um, I'm, I'm not like that. What's that prep guy? Um, he's got a really pop popular channel. Primitive Technologies. Yeah. That guy is, like, amazing. But anyhow, um, I'm going to try to build some stuff out here just kind of for fun and also for practice but we're gonna end up going in here to explore the bushes it is kind of scary back here so I definitely will be carrying my um, my uh, machete and maybe my hatchet because we do know there's cougars running around back here and we know there's armadillos and probably raccoons and I can hear the others in the distance Kind of wish I had an aerial view right here of this spot. That would help me a lot. I think I could try Google mapping the spot, but the map is so old, it probably doesn't show much. But I'm going to try to explore. So, I want to thank everybody for joining in. And, um, giving me, um, the support and encouragement that you have. I do appreciate it. So, until next time, everybody, have a great day.